Lee, uh, thank you very much. Uh, and I want to thank my colleagues and friends uh, for being on the call, Representatives uh, Garcia, Castro, uh, and Vela, uh, to talk about uh, the very important time that we're going through right now. That's obviously uh, our election and how it relates to Texas. Uh, just for everybody that's, that's on the call, uh, because I know that there are some people outside of DFW uh, uh, press outlets that may uh, be on right now. I represent the 33rd Congressional District. Uh, I live in Fort Worth and the district stretches between Fort Worth uh, and Dallas uh, counties. Uh, so yes, uh, Emily's absolutely right. We're having record breaker, record breaking uh, turnout uh, and we're seeing blatant attempts by Republicans in Texas to suppress uh, the voices of Texas voters, especially uh, minority voters. Uh, uh, and secondly, uh, the state of the race in Texas amid the last few weeks uh, of this cycle, I think has really uh, made a lot of that uh, intimidation even more uh, prevalent. Uh, and, I, and I just want you to just kind of think about something uh, 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 because as of this week, uh, nearly 6 million Texans have already cast their ballots in the presidential election. And if this pace keeps up, Texas is going to shatter our record for voting in the 2016 general election uh, where 9 million people uh, had their voices heard. Uh, and here in the Metroplex in both Dallas and Tarrant counties, uh, we're on pace to shatter 2016 and 2018 uh, voting numbers. Uh, and these record-breaking uh, voter turnout numbers are shown through news, uh, are shown uh, through news like the fact that this week, uh, because of the hard work of our county commissioners here, our two Democratic county commissioners, Roy Bricks and Devin Allen, Tarrant County uh, actually added eight early voting sites just to be able to accommodate uh, all the new voters that are participating this time around. Uh, and so this is uh, uh, great news. Uh, I, I just have not seen this level of voter enthusiasm uh, and momentum uh, like we're seeing uh, now. Uh, uh, and I have uh, never seen anything uh, like uh, the malicious uh, and politically motivated attempts by the president uh, and people like his psychophants, uh, Greg Abbott and Ken Paxson here in Texas uh, to suppress the voices of voters, again, especially minority voters. Uh, they are doing everything in their power uh, to stop voters from safely voting during this deadly pandemic. Uh, and our president has tried to gut funding from the U.S. Postal Service to slow down mail ballots uh, and also in the state, Texas Republicans are fighting tooth and nail to limit mail-in ballot drop-offs uh, to just one location, uh, even in the state's most uh, populous county that uh, Representative Garcia represents. Uh, and frankly, uh, I think uh, these attempts are actually energizing Texans even more to go to the polls. Uh, our state is ready uh, for a change. Uh, our state is ready for a new president. Our state is ready for new congressional members. Our state is ready uh, for a new state legislature uh, that will work hand in hand uh, for the people uh, and help all of us finally get through this pandemic so we can get our country back on the right track. And this unprecedented momentum, uh, especially in our state's most populous county, is showing, is showing that we are shattering the myth that Texas uh, is a Republican stronghold. Uh, our state uh, and electorate are diversifying every day with Hispanic, uh, black uh, and Asian voters. Uh, and again, it's just growing each and every day. Uh, and these communities can see right through the blatant attempts uh, by Texas Republicans uh, to rob them of their right uh, to vote. Uh, and that uh, is why I believe that we are going to keep building on our gains that we made the last few cycles. Uh, and, the moment, and the momentous voter turnout uh, is a great step in the right direction for the state. Uh, and which is why we need to keep up the movement we have built uh, from now until November the 3rd. Uh, because on election day, uh, we are going to move this state closer to the blue column uh, and get Trump out of office for good. Uh, and with that, I'm going to hand off uh, the conversation uh, to my longtime colleague, uh, both in the uh, state legislature and now uh, in the U.S. Congress representative, Sylvia Garcia of the 29th a congressional district in the greater Houston Harris County area. Sylvia. Uh, thank you, uh, Congressman VC, and to all my colleagues, thank you for joining us on this call. It's always great to, to be with you, and it's good to see you, even if it's only virtually. Uh, Harris County is excited. We are excited, excited, excited. 
Uh, we all know that this is the most important election of our lifetime. We're ready for change, and we want to be about making that change. Uh, that's why uh, right now Harris County is getting set to break uh, 1 million votes. Uh, we're at about 800,000. We expect to be at about a million uh, before the um, uh, 7 p.m. tonight or maybe tomorrow at latest. Uh, but, but that just underscores the enthusiasm uh, that we have here in Harris County. Uh, our election administrator has done a, a great job of, of doing things better. Uh, we knew that number one, the pandemic was gonna be a challenge. It was gonna be uh, hard to reassure people uh, that it was safe uh, to be uh, in line, it was safe to vote in person. So we really stressed uh, early voting locations more than double. We have 112 locations in Harris County. We have 10 uh, drive-through locations. Uh, we have curbside voting for handicapped and people needing assistance. And on October 29th, we're gonna have eight voting locations that are gonna be run 24 hours the day. No excuse, no matter what shift you're, you're working on or what you're doing, there will be eight locations open for people. All that was done, of course, to make people go out and vote and make it easier. Unlike what our other side of the aisle is doing uh, in the name of Governor Abbott and the Attorney General Ken Paxton, they are fighting this tooth and nail to make it less accessible to shut some of these initiatives down. Now, we all know that it started with el the elimination of straight ticket voting. I don't need to talk about that, but I do wanna talk about the record number of lawsuits that have been filed. We've had record number of voters, but we also are breaking records in lawsuits. Uh, there was a lawsuit, of course, that was filed to stop the, uh, the uh, election administrator from sending applications for mail ballots to all everyone. We lost that one. We, we, he tried to have more drop-off uh, points for early ballots. Uh, we had, I think, 11 that were set up around the county. We're the largest county. Uh, and of course, the courts went against us and said that, no, Abbott was right. We needed to just have one. Now they've also uh, uh, filed a lawsuit against our uh, drive-through locations. Uh, thankfully, the Supreme Court last night uh, uh, went along with us and we'll be able to vote, uh, uh, continue those, but it's still subject to debate as to whether or not uh, the Secretary of State is gonna count all those ballots or force us to do something different. So it seems that everything that we've done to try to make it easier, to make it better for people at locations, they have fought us. Uh, so I can only imagine, uh, uh, colleagues, what they're going to do uh, when they lose and they go even more stir crazy. I think we're going to have to be ready for more, more lawsuits to come, and we're going to have to uh, make sure uh, that we continue to work hard because people are excited. The turnout is great, uh, and I know that the turnout is there uh, for Joe Biden and Kamala Harris because when we look at the neighborhoods and the voting centers of where the votes are coming from, Harris County will again go blue, and Harris County will help turn Texas blue. Thank you all for being on the call, and I yield back. Congressman Castro. Sure. Well, it's great to be with my colleagues in Congress and also to speak to you all about uh, the amazing turnout in Texas so far. And unfortunately, the voter suppression efforts that Republicans have undertaken in this election, but really the history of voter suppression. And I want to give some context to this just really quickly. Uh, Mark Vesey and I both served in the legislature in uh, 2011 in the state house uh, when Republicans uh, passed their voter ID law, which was very controversial and got a lot of press attention. But there were probably four to a half dozen other smaller, what would be considered bite-sized laws that were also very pernicious. Uh, for example, they made it harder for someone to register people to vote even. Uh, they made it so that you've got to be deputized in each county where you want to register someone to vote. So there were these other things that Republicans tried to do to make it tough to register people to vote, to mobilize people to vote, and then made it harder ultimately for people to actually vote. Uh, and so in this election cycle, limiting the number of uh, mail ballot boxes 
uh, where people can drop off their mail ballots. Also, I believe challenging drive-through voting uh, sites to make it tougher. Uh, and then, of course, recently getting away with doing away with straight ticket voting. Uh, all of these things suggest that the Republican answer to competing uh, for voters is not to have to compete. They do everything they can to not to have to actually compete on ideas and policy, but rather uh, to cut off competition. Uh, but what we're seeing in Bear County and throughout the state is very promising. Uh, in San Antonio, I'm confident that we're going to break our turnout records, uh, that we're going to break the record from 2016. Uh, and so I think that we'll have an all time high turnout that will surpass about 750,000 votes here in Bear County. Uh, to give you a sense of scale, in 2016, there were 36,000 mail ballots that were turned in. In 2020, there were at least 100,000 applications. Uh, and we believe that most of the, oh, the lion's share of those will turn into actual returned mail ballots. Uh, and so you're going to see an amazing turnout in Bear County and throughout the state. Uh, and we also want to remind people that they should go out and vote. You still have until October 30th to get out there. Uh, that so many statewide elected officials in Texas have tried to put every barrier and obstacle in the way of ordinary Texans who are just wanting uh, to go exercise their right to vote. Uh, and the way that you defeat that, the way that you usher in change, and the way you tell them that you strongly disagree with that is by actually getting out there uh, and voting. So with that, I'll turn it back over. Thank you. And now Representative Vela. Sounds like we lost feel if we want to move on to the next segment. Yeah, um, while we figure out the technical difficulties, um, we will open it up from questions from the audience now. If you have a question, please unmute yourself. Any questions? Okay. Well, with that, if there aren't any questions, um, then we will wrap it up. Um, and um, Congressman VC, if you want to give a few closing remarks. Actually, uh, Emily, Brett Jaspers, I don't know how you can- um, Give me one second. Yeah, yeah, but he has a question. Hey, Brett, can you hear us? I can hear you, but I wasn't able to unmute myself. Can you hear me now? Yes, we can hear you now. Yeah. yeah. Hi, hi, thank you. I was just wondering if any of you had an update or, or information on what happened with the coronavirus relief deal. Any insight onto, onto where that stands or if it really is truly uh, dead until the election or dead permanently? I know it's a priority for all of us on this call and our entire caucus and the speaker is working around the clock uh, to get a deal. Joaquin, have you been updated on anything? You, Sylvia, have you all no. heard anything? Yeah, the last update I got, I was a part of a meeting with the speaker uh, late Wednesday afternoon. And you know, she spoke about her willingness, her continued willingness to try to reach an agreement with Republicans. Um, and, you know, and mentioned just that there were still areas where they were not budging. Uh, again, you know, our intent all along is to, has been to, to pass something that is meaningful and impactful for people. We don't wanna just rubber stamp a piece of legislation to allow uh, politicians to go home and say, oh, we did something. Uh, it's gotta be something that's gonna have a real effect and real impact on uh, very vulnerable people right now. Uh, and by that, I mean millions and millions of Americans of every lot in life. Uh, so that was the latest that we got, was that there were still several hangups 
uh, in terms of the negotiation, uh, but the speaker was working in earnest. Any specific hangups? Uh, I'll refer you to the speaker's office for that. Hmm. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's important to say that, that all of us support the speaker and think she's been doing uh, just a tremendous, tremendous work uh, together with the leadership of all the committees. And we're on call. I mean, we could be called tomorrow. We could be called Sunday night to, to come over and all of us are going to be more than willing to do that because as Representative Vesey said, you know, that is a big priority for us. It's about doing the work for the people, but it's about putting, you know, a roof over people's head, food on the table, uh, and keeping people safe, uh, healthy, uh, either as they return back to their jobs or return back to school. Uh, that's our priority. And the only way we can do that is in partnership with local governments. And, <coughs> excuse me. The lo <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> I pass. <coughs> Any other questions, y'all? Okay, I recovered. We're we're on call. We're ready to go. We're ready to go back and fight for the people. And I know all my colleagues uh, feel the same way. Sylvia, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate your comments, Joaquin. Appreciate your comments, and want to thank both of you for joining. Uh, and also uh, the press that uh, made the call today. Uh, Brett, thank you very much for your question, and we will see you next time. Hope everybody remembers to go and vote on November the 3rd. Thank you. Bye, everybody.